Hi, I'm Kim from Intel Granulate, and today I'm going to take you through a demo of our capacity optimization solution. Let's take a look at a real production cluster. As you can see in the first screen you land on, all the metrics are visible and you can see how this cluster works. In this cluster, it is evident that there is a difference between the utilization metrics to the reservation metrics, and there is also a lot of over-provisioning. On average, 230%, in some places even 400%, and overall 35% of the cluster is being used and 65% of the cluster is available. This shows us a cluster that is very over-provisioned in CPU. If I move over to the memory, you can see that it is also over-provisioned, although slightly less so than the CPU. Here, it's around 100 to 200%, and you can also see that this cluster is more CPU intensive and less memory bound. If you look at the additional metrics, like the amount of cores and pods that there are in the cluster, you can see that overall, it's a pretty big cluster with around 2000 cores, and the amount of pods is also relatively big with 4000 pods on average and 85 nodes. In this dashboard, you can also see the nodes tab distribution. This refers to the different types of nodes that are found in the cluster. You'll be able to understand the cluster size and the list of applications that are in the cluster. You'll see each app, where the app is located, in what namespace, the amount of pods each application has in real time, CPU and memory utilization and reservation, and what type of application it is, if it's deployment, replica set, job, and so on. Let's jump to the recommendation view. And like I said previously, you can see that this cluster is very over-provisioned, so there will be a lot of right-sizing recommendations. This is the table of recommendations. The first stage is to look at the preferences of the recommendations. First up is the mode, where you can see how the recommendations have been calculated. There are three different types of modes. The first mode is where you take the highest averages and then generate the recommendation. On the scale of a conservative recommendation to an aggressive one, this mode is in the middle. If you wanted to be more aggressive in your recommendations, you could choose the average mode or be more conservative and choose the max pod utilization mode. Data coverage enables you to configure how much historical data you want for each application. For example, if you choose 80% of data coverage based on the last 14 days, only recommendations with sufficient amount of data will be shown. Buffer is the safety margin that you'll want to take from the highest spike utilization based on the chosen mode. In this example, you want to calculate the new request values with a 30% safety margin from the highest spike. In addition, data coverage refers to the lookback period of what's defined. The default is set to 80% over the last seven days. In other words, the last 5.6 days. If you change the lookback period, it will affect the data coverage you should configure. The recommendations can be for CPU and memory, but you can also choose just one type of resource and to only apply that type. Additionally, you will need to decide if you want to see recommendations for downsize, upsize, or all types, which is our recommendation. Upsize recommendations will be realized up until the initial value that you set. In the table of recommendations, you can see that each row shows a recommendation for a different application. You can then identify the application uniquely based on the resource name, namespace, and container. If there are multiple containers, then you'll see a list of recommendations for each one. Each recommendation can be applied to CPU, memory, or both. In this case, you only see a memory recommendation to reduce it from 1.5 GI to 1.07 GI. If there is an HPA policy on this deployment, then you'll also receive a recommendation for HPA. You can also see the impact of the recommendation from resources and a monetary perspective based on the entire cluster. Here, you can see the information icon that will show you if there are any risks in applying this recommendation. For example, throttling or out of memory events. Another example, 
Here, you can see recommendations for CPU requests and HPA policy. If you click on the recommendation, you can see how it was created and what the metrics look like. You can see the big gap between the utilised and the reserved and where the recommendation fits in this space. If you reduce or increase the buffer, the recommendations will be adjusted to suit in terms of graphs and cost savings. If you click on See Details, you'll be able to see ways in which you can apply this recommendation. One option is the kubectl patch command, which can be run on the cluster and will make an immediate change to all the pods in the cluster. With the help of YAML, you can copy paste the new recommendations to the Git repository and future updates to the application will be with the new recommendation values. The final way to do it is via the UI. In one click, you can apply all the recommendations. Intel Granulate takes into account if there is a rolling update or any other risk there could be before applying it, and the pods will be updated with the new values. With our new autopilot feature, you're able to add a configuration to every cluster, set the parameters, choose which applications you want to include in the configuration, or just select all, including future applications that will be added to deployment. You can then decide if you want CPU and memory and the minimum impact for each recommendation, and whether it should be downsized, upsized, or both. Once you've included all the applications, you'll receive a cost-saving estimate based on the current state of the chosen configuration. Once you click on Create, all the applications included in the configuration and their recommendations will be applied automatically. So now we've been over the recommendations, let's see how they can be applied. This is a test cluster, and as you can see here, there are various recommendations. Let's look at the first recommendation. Here, for example, the value taken is 256 millicores, and I want to change it to 21.75 millicores. So if I press apply and then confirm, the recommendation will be applied and will enter a queue until Intel Granulate feels it's the right time to implement the change without causing any issues in the cluster. This process usually takes about 10 minutes. At any given moment, you can stop the recommendation that's in progress by clicking the rollback button. You can also see here that there are some recommendations already active and even on those, you can click rollback and go back to the initial value before the recommendations were implemented. On the rare occasion where a recommendation fails, you can see why by clicking See Details. In this instance, Intel Granulate stopped the recommendation from being implemented due to an unexpected initial value. Additionally, here you can see if the recommendation applied was done manually or with the autopilot feature. You can also see the value of resource reduction per controller. For example, in this test cluster, you can see that there was a change in memory from 70 millicores to 13.88 millicores, and you can see all the changes for the pods. For example, you can see that it's been reduced from 648.47 millicores to 128.61 millicores, and the savings, and where the recommendation was made. Intel Granulate recently launched a brand new feature, Labels. In Kubernetes, labels operate as key value pairs, empowering DevOps teams to classify and control pods and nodes. Acting like tags, these labels facilitate organization of resources according to specific criteria, such as payment tier. Labels can be used to distinguish between free, premium or enterprise payment tiers making tasks like scaling, monitoring, and deploying updates more streamlined. This feature enables you to define labels for data collection across multiple clusters. The feature permits creation of autopilot configurations per label and the filtering of recommendations based on labels. If you click on Manage Labels, you can easily add or remove your defined K8 labels. Once added, Click search to choose the label and see all the resources that come under that label name. And then you can configure autopilot that is aimed at a specific label. Additionally, you can prioritize configurations. 
So if you have an application that is related to more than one label, you can prioritize so that the application knows which configuration to pull for the autopilot.